The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. ESPN NFL draft analyst Mel Kuyper Jr. revealed why he has the New York Jets taking a polarizing player with the number 10 pick in the draft. He also ran through the thought process behind other options for the Jets as we are less than two weeks away from the first round of the draft. We'll talk about what Kuyper said and much more. It's the Jake Asbitt Show. Let's hit it and get it started. Man. Our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Aaron freaking Rodgers. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Chat, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinton Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, uh, here we go. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome in. It's time to talk all things New York Jets. Before we do any of that, please, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, do it. We are within range of potentially reaching 37,000 subscribers by the end of this upcoming weekend. We're at 36,920 as I sit here and record this show with you live on a Friday morning. So we are close, 80 away. So hit that subscribe button and like this video if you haven't. It goes a long way towards this channel continuing to grow. Before we get started, a reminder, we signed an ambassador deal with Fanatics. So if you are interested in some discounted Jets gear, see the link below. You'll notice because the Jets have themselves a new jersey reveal, a lot of their stuff is currently discounted if you want the old logo. But the old logo is actually the new logo because the logo they're changing things to is actually the old logo. So as you can see, you could always wear Jets gear from the current logo because it's still a new logo, if that somehow made sense. But if you want it discounted, there's some really cool shirts available for under 25 bucks. I have that pinned down below. So shout out to Fanatics for being on board the Jake Asman show moving forward. But that being said, let's hear from Mel Kuyper Jr. Because Mel had a lot to say during a media conference call that ESPN put together. Brian Costello for the New York Post asked Mel Kuyper about why Kuyper has the Jets selecting Brock Bowers with the number 10 pick. And this was Mel Kuyper breaking down Bowers and the other options for the Jets. I, I just went with Bowers as a weapon. Uh, they need that. Uh, people say, well, they don't have to have a tight end, but he's a guy who can do so many different things. Could you look at an offensive lineman? Sure. You could take a J.C. Latham or a Tali Fuaga or a Troy Fautanu uh, because that would give you insurance. You have six guys. That, so if you have five guys, if you keep them healthy, they're good. Do you want that sixth man who could be insurance in case your two bookend veteran 33-year-old tackles that have an injury issues get hurt and Vera Tucker's had injury issue, right? So you get a sixth man as a, an insurance policy with Aaron Rodgers at 40 years of age coming off an Achilles. So I could I, I could take either one, Bowers or the lineman. Well, if I'm going to take the lineman, I'm going to trade off a 10. If I'm taking Bowers, I'll take him at 10. If, I'm a, if I really want Bowers, you take him there. If you want a lineman, I think you could move off a 10. And the key there is getting a second round pick back. Right now, the Jets don't have one. They could move down and get that second round pick back and still get a really good offensive lineman as the sixth man. So that would be the thought process for me. So I agree with Mel's thought process here. Now, I disagree with the idea of taking Bowers at 10, but where Mel says, you know, if you're going to take an offensive lineman, I would do it in a trade down. That's how I feel about Bowers. So my thought process is aligned with Mel as far as looking to trade out of 10. But my thought process is differing from Mel when it comes to taking Bowers at 10 versus trading out for the lineman. I think it should be reverse. I think you should just take the lineman at 10 if there's someone you love and you can't find a trade down partner rather than Bowers. But I think ultimately the Jets, I think their preference would be to trade out. 
But as we've talked about for months on the show, everyone says trade back, trade back, trade back. Who's coming up? You need, I believe, quarterbacks to be overvalued, overhyped. And maybe we do have that, but still, I mean, we're talking about, at that point, I think five quarterbacks having to go in the first 10 picks if the Jets are able to find a trade partner. Because realistically, quarterbacks going one, two, three. I think McCarthy's going to go in the top nine. So you would need a fifth quarterback to really go in the top 10. It's not going to be easy for the Jets to find that trade partner. So then the conversation is, well, do you just take Bowers because he's such a great weapon? And I've made my point on the show clear. I don't trust the Jets to utilize the unicorn that is Brock Bowers. Do I trust Rodgers? Sure. But I, I, I question just how great Bowers is going to be at the next level. Like maybe he'll be a very good player. Is he going to be a very good player right away? And and what's an all in year? I need someone that's going to help me if I'm taking a tight end that high. And while Bowers, I'm sure will help tight end is not a glaring need for the jets. They have a really good one in Tyler Conklin and ascending young player who I'd like to see play in Jeremy Ruckard. And I think if you're going to go weapon at number 10, Shouldn't it be a receiver because you're one ankle sprain from Garrett Wilson away from having an injury-prone Mike Williams coming off an ACL, Xavier Gibson, Alan Lazard, Jason Brownlee. So shouldn't it be a receiver if you're going to argue the weapon route? I mean, I think this really comes down to how do the Jets feel about some of the other receivers in the class? How do they feel about Brian Thomas Jr.? How do they feel about Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, Ladd McConkey? I mean, Kuyper, I think, said during this conference call, he has 15 wide receivers going within the first two rounds. So trading back and getting a second round pick will be huge because you're in range to get one of those receivers. But I think ultimately the names you heard Mel mention there. Fascinating list of names. Right? He says, if you look offensive lineman, you could take J.C. Latham or Talese Fuaga or Troy Fontanu. He also brought up the fact that you would essentially have a sixth man as an insurance policy. That's the best comp possible for the Jets going offensive line if they, in my opinion, can't get a Roma Dunze or they don't trade up for Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. The idea that the Jets will take a lineman and that guy's not going to play all year, I think is crazy. Plus, if you're the Jets, you hope you're never picking this high again for the foreseeable future. So it's going to be hard to find a replacement for Tyron Smith and Megan, maybe Morgan Moses a year from now. So add to your pipeline on the O-line. I think we saw the Jets do this with defensive line the last two years with Jermaine Johnson and then Will McDonald. They have like a pipeline of guys on that side of the ball. They should have a pipeline on the offensive side of the ball too. Best case scenario, you take a guy that doesn't have to play because Tyron Smith's healthy, Morgan Moses is healthy, AVT is healthy, Tipman is healthy, etc. That's best case scenario, right? But realistically, best case scenario for the Jets doesn't happen. Let's call it for what it is, people. It does not happen. So that lineman's going to have to play. But they don't necessarily have to play week one or week two, so that guy gets to sit and learn from a Hall of Famer and Tyron Smith from a really good right tackle on Morgan Moses. Like there's value in that. And then that guy in theory hits the ground running as one of your starters for the next decade, ideally beginning in 2025, but your ass is covered in case you get absolutely decimated with injuries again in 2024. I trust Aaron Rodgers to make the receivers pass catchers. However, we're going to label the jets weapons. Cause Brees Hall is a pass catcher. He's a dynamic running back. He's also probably going to be the jets second leading receiver this year. Watch. He's that special. He's what McCaffrey is with the Niners. Look at his numbers. Now look at Brees. And Brees did it coming off a torn ACL and on a snap count at the beginning of the year and with garbage at quarterback and with garbage at the offensive coordinator spot who didn't even realize Brees Hall could catch passes until week eight. And he still had 1,600 yards from scrimmage. And by the way, the O-line sucked and led the NFL in injuries and three of the five starters can't even find work right now and it's April 12th. So I say all that to say I trust Aaron Rodgers to figure out the weapon situation. I don't trust Nate Hackett if Aaron Rodgers goes down because they can't protect him. Even with Tyrod there, yes, he can win you a couple games, but if it's a serious injury, your season's over. So what raises your floor? That, to me, is what the pick should be.
to me, it's still an offensive lineman, unless you are able to get one of the big three receivers because the talent's too good to pass up. And once again, you're a sprained ankle away with Garrett Wilson from having major questions in your receiver room. So to me, it's big three receiver or offensive lineman. If you could accomplish the trade down and get a second round pick, that's the dream scenario. If you could trade back and even get a third round pick, then you have two threes and two fours. You could wheel and deal like we know Joe Douglas likes to do, and you could get yourself into the second round where Mel Kuyper says in the first two days of the draft, he's got 15 wide receivers going. So if you're the Jets, you could tap into that pipeline by taking advantage of that opportunity. So that to me is still what I would do. But the names Mel mentions, I agree with. I would take a, a Talise Fulaga at 10 if I couldn't find a trade partner. I would take Fontano at 10 if I couldn't find a trade partner. Latham, I honestly think would make a lot of sense for the Jets at 10 because they say he's a little raw. I need some time to develop, but he might be the most talented player in the draft. I've heard people say that. I know he's Joe Blewett's number one rated offensive lineman. I know he's Lance Zerline's number one rated offensive lineman. That guy would be great for the Jets because he doesn't have to play right away. So they got options here, man. But if they take Bowers, he better be unbelievable right away. All right, he better be Sam Laporta from day one. Because there's such a risk involved in that. Forget the Jet history of taking tight ends in the first round. The Kyle Brady's, Johnny Mitchell's, Anthony Beck. I mean, Dustin Keller was a nice player, but he was a pick 30. You wouldn't use a top 10 pick on Dustin Keller. Forget about the Jets history of taking tight ends. Look since 2011 at the history of that position in the draft. It's ugly, man. It is not good. And the Jets are going to be the team that's going to figure out how to utilize that position. Oh, but Jake, if Travis Kelsey, you know, was redrafted, he would have been a first rounder. Yeah, but. It's a hard position to evaluate. That's the point. If Dak Prescott was in this draft and we knew what he'd be, he'd be a first rounder. Kirk Cousins, he'd be a first rounder. Tom Brady would be the first overall pick. He was pick 199. Tight ends are just as hard to evaluate as quarterbacks. If you really look at the bust rate, this was what I was referring to. This is since 2011, people. Rookie contract status for first round tight ends since 2011. Now, I acknowledge not all these guys in here were top 10 picks, but some of them were. See Kyle Pitts. Ask any Falcon fan if that's worked out so far. How about Eric Ebron? I mean, this is every first-round tight end, once again, since 2011. There's an argument to be made. It doesn't make sense to take a tight end that high. I had a scout tell me, Bowers is a better version of Dalton Kincaid. I need him to be a much better version of Dalton Kincaid if I'm taking him in the top 10. So I'm not on board with the Bowers at 10. You do it in a trade back, that makes more sense. Because then you could go Bowers, who might be the best weapon, offensive lineman round two, receiver round three. That makes more sense. But at least Kuyper acknowledges it's a real debate between Bowers, in his mind, versus Latham, Luaga, Fontano. Here's a hot take. I don't know if Latham's going to make it to 10. I can see Tennessee snagging him at 7. Also, it does feel like Olu Fashanu has maybe taken a hit here. Now, I got to look at Kuyper's draft. Maybe Fashanu was gone already. That's why he didn't mention him in this scenario here. But it does feel like, feel like the new flavor of the month is J.C. Latham. And obviously, we know the Jets have been connected to Fulaga. Douglas apparently loves the guy. But ultimately, to me, the Jets are in a pretty good spot with this 10th pick. Even if they took Bowers, while I wouldn't love it, I'm not going to sit here and act like that doesn't make them better. It obviously does. I just hope they could figure out a comprehensive plan to get Conklin and Bowers on the field together. And not run like a prehistoric offense. I trust Rodgers to do that, but I don't trust Nathaniel Hackett. Thoughts on Mel Kuyper's suggestion for the Jets? He says, take Bowers or trade back and take one of the offensive linemen. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. I appreciate all of you for tuning into the show this morning. Please subscribe to the channel. We are within 80 subscribers of hitting that 37,000 threshold mark. 
which is an unbelievable number and a testament to how great this fan base is. The big fella, he starts us off. He has got a super chat. Playing, coming together, trade down to get Fatanu. If they did that, I would love it because Fatanu can play left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. You want a sixth man? How about a guy who could play four of the five positions on your offensive line? I love it. R and R says, "Wait, what? Brees could catch? Yeah, somebody tell Nate Hackett." <laughs> Cliff D says, "Trade up for quarterback May." Uh, let's not and say we did. H how about that? Let's not do that. Jets are not taking a quarterback. Callie Jets says, "Subscribe and hit the like button." You're a real one, Callie. Love it. Love it. Today's Jake Asman show is presented by our Megacast Draft Week, folks. We're getting closer and closer. We will be live in Vegas. Our Megacast is sponsored by Circa Resort and Casino. Full draft coverage all three days of the NFL Draft right here on this YouTube channel. And we are going to be live from the largest sports book in the country. We'll be indoors. We'll be outdoors during the Megacast. we got special guests set to join. I'm also pleased to announce that we have signed a sponsorship deal with JetsXFactor.com. Shout out to Robbie Sabo and the team for being a part of our draft megacast. We're going to be featuring JetsXFactor.com personalities all three days of the draft. Robbie will be on. Fialka will be on. I'm going to beg the great Joe Blewett to come on. Maybe Nadia will come on the pro. Who knows? But shout out to Jets X Factor. It's going to be a lot of fun. They're a part of our coverage. We're going to have Will Parkinson on the show, Jeff Parles on the show, the Buffalo Jet fan on the show, and a couple other special guests. I'm not ready to announce just yet, but I'm telling you, Circa's the place to be. Tune in on this YouTube channel. Watch the draft with us. And, of course, the next time you're in Vegas, book your stay at Circa Resort and Casino. All right. Comments, questions, super chats, and, of course, your calls. Ricky NY is first up on the Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline today. What's up, Ricky? Hey, what's happening, Jake? Um, you know what? I completely agree with everything Kuiper said. Uh, Bowers is generational, uh, definitely worthy of a, of a top pick, and hopefully some GM out there not named Joe Douglas believes that too and takes him before we get to the Jets and we don't even have to worry about it. That's what I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping somebody out there uh, – has delusions of grandeur and, and takes him at like five or six or something and just gets it out of the way. So it's not even an option and we don't have to hear about that anymore. Uh, that That's what I'm hoping. Ricky, did you pull the all nighter? You look a little tired. Yeah. I, I just got in from work about a half an hour ago. So yeah, I did like, I don't know. I went in, at like five and walked out at like eight. So <laughs> it was a long night. I love it. I love it, Ricky. Appreciate the call, man. Ryan writes in great receiving weapons help the O-line as good as Adunze is. Bowers is a better prospect. I disagree. I think Adunze is better. I disagree with that. I would rather who's a better football player. I think Roma Adunze is better than Brock Bowers. So uh, people might not agree with that. That's fine. I think position value and just who I rather have, give me a Dunze. Watch our film review yesterday with Professor Fialco if you missed it. We broke down a Dunze's tape. Jimbo writes in, Jake, you think there's a scenario where we trade down a few spots to get Fatanu, Fulaga, Mims, and then use the second we get in the trade plus a third to get back at the end of the first and get a receiver? Now, that would be bold. I think they would try and get back into the second to get one of these receivers, Jimbo. But I guess we can't rule it out. It depends how far they would have moved down and how many picks they got if they were going to come all the way back into the first round. They would need a second round pick to do it. Did they get maybe a second and another fourth? And then it's like, we'll give you a second and two fourths to a team to get back into round one. And that's the all-in move they want to make. I could see it. Now that we talk it through, that's certainly on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, a super chat from Jorge. $10 in value. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, what would be the draft pick that would knock your socks off in terms of a surprise pick? Uh, a quarterback, certainly. 
I actually still think Bowers would be a surprise. I know all the mocks have it. I think it's a smoke screen. I think the Jets want teams thinking they're taking Bowers. I think they want it out there. I do. Bowers would actually surprise me. I guess I wouldn't be stunned because we talked so much about him, but I, I still would be surprised if the Jets took Brock Bowers. I would. Back to the calls we go. Thanks for the super chat, Jorge. BK is up next this morning. What's up, BK? Jake, what's up, man? Um, I just wanted to say, like, I'm not really for Bowers at all, but everyone keeps kind of talking about it. But then you look at the four teams in the conference championships games, and they have the four best tight ends in the league, besides, like, Andrews getting hurt. So, like, I don't know if it's a case of, like, great teams making good tight ends great or just um you know circumstance so i just wanted to hear your thoughts on that well i think uh, if you look at those tight ends though how many of them were first round picks yeah that's a good point <laughs> i mean Kittle wasn't kelsey wasn't laporta wasn't andrews was but he was a late one you know he wasn't a top 10 pick I'm, I I want I want Fuaga, the uh oregon state guy i think i think depth is more important than a tight end because like the way these offenses go in the NFL, like Bowers will probably only play maybe what, like 60% of the snaps, you know, and that doesn't really move the needle in terms of wins and losses, in my opinion. Yeah. Look, I, if he's great, obviously, if you tell me the guy's going to be Travis Kelsey, I'm like, yeah, take him duh. But like it, to me, it's like, we, we need to start talking about tight ends in the first round like they're quarterbacks. Like, they're, there's too big of a bust rate, man. It, like, take the guy with the higher floor, which to me would be a lineman or would be a wide receiver. The the yards after the catch is pretty intriguing, though. Yes. <laughs> no, Look, no. It, I, I like him as a prospect. I would feel more comfortable taking him if they took him in the late teens rather than at 10. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Jake. BK, I appreciate you. Folks, we have... Breaking news, the likes of which we've been waiting for for a very, very long time. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey. Sound the alarms, baby. Sound the alarms. History has finally happened. Jorge has gifted 10 as Maniac memberships, and I see it right here. Ricky NY, who was our first caller, fresh off the overnight shift, finally has received an Asmaniac membership, courtesy once again of Jorge Perez, who is a American hero on this fine football Friday morning on the 12th of April, 2024. Unbelievable. It has finally happened. Ricky NY is now an Asmaniac. He figured out how to turn on gift receipts, and he immediately got one. Jorge gifted the following memberships to another Jorge, Jorge Galvez, Green Gang 365, Basil Williams, Antonio Ambroso, Ron G, Big Rush 2112, Sneaker King, Jets fans since birth, Ray Danger, all received memberships. And of course, the biggest name there, it has finally happened, Ricky and why He's done it. It has happened. Congratulations to everyone. Who just received a membership. And of course, shout out to Jorge for paying it forward. Andres has written in with a super chat for us. Want Rome because y'all a bunch of wide receivers in the bedroom. No Diddy, take Bowers. I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, I would take Rome because he's an awesome football player who to me would be like the dream type of receiver Aaron Rodgers could throw passes to. This comment's weird, but I'll take your money gladly. Uh, keep going here. Let's see. Congrats to all the channel members, people making it rain this morning. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Shout out to Jorge. We got stacks of bills, baby. Yeah. Let's go to Jason. He's up next. What's up, Jason? Jason. What's going on, Jake? Hey, brother. Being the, been, a, been a fan of your, of your channel for... For a couple of years, man, I appreciate your contact, uh, your your content, and everything that you're putting through. I got a random one for you. Let me give you a disclaimer first. I'm I'm of the uh, of the opinion that we absolutely need to go with uh, an offensive lineman. Uh, you know, I I hope you know Tipman fills the shoes of a mango one day. I I feel like we need another brick. You know, 
I feel like we need another brick. I don't know what that looks like. If we could find them in this draft, that'd be absolutely amazing. But my random question for you is, what do you think the chances are that Bowers goes before us, you know, ultimately, you know, giving us a more valued pick at, at 10? I, I would love it if that happened, Jason. I don't really see the spot for him to go before the Jets, unless a team trades up for him. But I would hope they would trade up for him with the Jets. So I don't really see the spot where Bowers is not on the board when the Jets are picking. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, it's one of those things. I know there's a lot of teams that love to have themselves a Kelsey or a Kittle. Is he that guy? You know, if he's that guy, um, I wonder if there's a team out there that, that values – that position you know that much to to jump in front or you know to go ahead and take him before us and which, which i think would be a blessing and a half for the jets no yeah look a hundred percent if you tell me that he's that guy and you can get him i'm on board if someone else thinks he's that guy and they trade up in front of the jets and that pushes a dunes they may be there or, one, or alt or one of the linemen we're not thinking of i think that's great too jason i think what's exciting is the New York Jets should be in a pretty good spot to get a damn good player at 10, no matter what they decide. Even if they take Bowers, I'm not going to sit here and act like he's not a really good prospect. I just think there's better uses of resources with that number 10 pick. 100%, brother. I appreciate you taking the call, man. We'll talk to you soon. Jason, appreciate you, man. Call on any time. The big fella checks in. Interesting question here from the big fella. What do you think of a Knoble jersey giveaway? I will help donate. Big fella, if you donate a custom Knoebel jersey, we'll give it away draft night on the show. That'll be awesome. We're already giving away a signed Garrett Wilson photo, courtesy of my friends at ESPN New York. But we are going to be giving away a Knoebel jersey too, courtesy of the big fella. You kidding me? Who wouldn't want a Knoebel jersey? Who wouldn't want them? Jaden says, how many tight ends have you seen get an end around? Once again, he's an incredibly talented prospect. Still don't want him at 10. Shake and Bake says, how about the Knicks, Shake? How about the New York Knicks? F Boston. Oh, that was tremendous last night. Now all of a sudden the Celtics don't care, right? But they rested all their starters to specifically try and play the Knicks last night. And then the Knicks spanked them and pounded their asses out of the gym. I loved it. That was incredible last night. And then the Islanders won in overtime. I was giddy last night. It was a great evening. Tremendous. Big fella says, how much do I have to donate to get it? Message me off air, big fella, because we sent Lane Train a custom Lane Kerner jersey, and I forget how much I had to pay NFL.com to get that done. So we'll look into that for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is raining memberships this morning. You better be watching live because you never know when it's going to happen for you because look what has just transpired here. Ladies and gentlemen, NYJ Dave says, let's go. Money, 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 money. The following 10 listeners were just gifted as maniac memberships by NYJ Dave. Smoky Cat, nine lives. Party with Peg and Artie. Merklo 26, FPP, Jose Oliveros, Mikhail Edwards, Dave Briga, John D, A-Rod's Left Achilles, and Elvis Rivera. You were just gifted channel memberships. Congratulations, Dave. Incredibly kind, my man. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. TH3 Entertainment checks in and says this. Oh, super realistic shot that we could trade back and obtain a second then use that second and package the other picks to move back into the first round come away with a tackle and a receiver or bowers yeah someone asked a similar question about this earlier thc i do see the path i think it is all set up though by the jets having the trade back and getting that that uh that second and then you could package the second and then come into the first round because you have a third and two fourths so you could do your second, a third, one of your fourths, that's enough to move back into the first round. Or a second, a third, a pick next year, you keep your two fourths, that's enough to move back into the first round. If you look at the trade value chart. So, yeah, they could do this. Now, 
I think in a dream scenario, let's say they trade back, take Troy Fontano, get a second round pick, then come back into the first round and they take Lad McConkey. Something like that would excite the hell out of me, man. That'd be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, people are still asking, how do I become an Asmaniac? Well, the biggest thing you should do is like every video, subscribe to the channel, and engage in the chat because when someone like NY Jet Dave or when someone as nice as Jorge Perez decides to gift memberships, the YouTube algorithm is more likely to select you. So how do you also become an Asmaniac? You simply just hit the join button and sign up. You get all the perks for just $5 a month. Shake and bake writes in. Jake, maybe not Bowers at 10. But what about Bowers in a trade down, say middle first round, 18 to 26? Yeah. Well, if you take them at 18, I'm assuming you got a second round pick. If you do that, like Bengals Jets trade proposal that Nick Faria put out there, you're getting a second. So I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, BMAC is on the line and he's up next. Hello, BMAC. Hey, Jake. Uh, happy uh, Friday to you. Um, yeah, uh, I, I want to call in to give you a question and a point. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the chat saying that uh, uh, one guy said that uh, uh, that they that the Jets need to take a quarterback in, at, with the 10th pick. Um, like, no. Not no. if you're gonna get a quarterback like you'll be saying, do it day two or day three of the draft. Have that guy at the Memento Memento project. And, um, you know, like Joe Douglas just had that type of leash. Like when we did it with with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, with love, who wasn't on the hot seat? You know, I mean, who had a lead? Uh, Joe Douglas is on a short lead because let's face it, if y'all don't make the playoffs in, 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 in and when with the LBP Rogers, then everybody is out of the uh, uh, is out of performing, uh, performing part, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, get a offense, like I said, wide receiver, or uh, maybe uh, 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 offensive lineman, wide receiver, I be for offensive lineman, but uh, you know, my foul is not really that high on a tight end. High, you know what I mean? If you trying to get a tight end, maybe the third round or I'm just not sold on the Black Virus thing, but I, I do say O line. But uh, what do you um, you know, uh, question I got for you? Um, it, it, it's probably a dumb question, but you know, what's your thing about Rogers not having a 300 yard game this last year at Green Bay because the national media keep bringing it up? Uh, uh, uh Kevin Wild, Joy Terrell. Like, like, what you thought of that? Well, to me, it had a lot to do with the fact that you guys didn't have great weapons this last year there. A lot of young players. I also think he was playing hurt. Like People conveniently forget Rodgers played with a rib injury that year and had a broken thumb on his throwing hand. I think what's great about what he's doing with the Jets, though, he doesn't need to throw for that many 300-yard games. They should be able to run the ball with Brees. They should be able to play, have a ball control offense. I think I'll have many 300 yard games, though. I do. Dan writes in Jake, you may not be asked this often. But what's your biggest realistic fear regarding the draft? They take a defensive tackle, Dan. I, I, I've had nightmares about it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. James says, Jake, what do you want for the Jets' third helmet? I think it's just going to be an all black helmet. So I have the green one, the all black. I think they should bring back the helmet that they wore, like, in the Namath era. I think that would be cool. Thea says, hey, Jake, I watch all your podcasts. Even if I don't watch them live, I'm a diehard Jet fan. I need your podcast to keep me sane, especially throughout all the Jet soap opera drama. Thea, appreciate you. Thank you. Shout out to all our great Jet fans. Hit that subscribe button, people. We're hoping to get to 37,000 by the end of the weekend.
Green Gang says, are you hearing the Colts can trade up with us and take Bowers at 10? It's been thrown out there. It's not substantiated that that's their guy, though. It's rumor season. Let's get back to the calls right now. Keith is up next. Hello, Keith. Do you hear me? Uh, we hear you, Keith. What do you got for us? Do you hear me, Jake? Oh, we hear you, Keith. Okay. So I wanted to go. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. I wanted to go off to a minute. I watched your video on gate on that you did with Gator. I know you said you're not a morning person. And I watched your whole travel log of, of growing up and listening with your dad and all that. And I did the same thing. I was just in a different industry in New York. And uh, I remember when I was a kid taking all the bids down to the Port Authority building on 100th floor of World Trade Center when I was a teenager. But I was very inspired by your journey um, on the Gator, on your Gator interview. You know, I, I was at uh, Shea Stadium um, and, uh, you know, uh, 81 when we were losing 15 to 9 to the Dolphins. And you had guys like Wesley Walker, Abdul Salam, Mark Asino, Richard Klecko, you know, Richard Todd with a busted rib, Revis. And uh, with 21 seconds left, they scored a touchdown. They get the extra point and they won. So, so when I have that analog history in my head, I think about, you know, I'm not, I'm not an analyst. We didn't have analysts back in the day. You had SNY just starting out. Um, you were able to get TV from um, Madison Square Garden for free, um, you know, the old days. You know, I was a Ranger fan. I know you're an Island for, Islander fan. I was a Jets fan. I was a Mets fan. You're a Yankee fan. And um, But at the end of the day, I've, I've gone to games like that. I, I was at the Jets game where we beat the Giants 25 nothing. you know, over in the Meadowlands. And uh, those – those are the old days. Now you have analytics, you have electronics, you have technology. I, you know, you're you're insane on your value of your technology and how you do it. Um, I did that earlier. We didn't have what we have today. Do you remember in the old days, the wide receiver would call the play out to, out to the quarterback, and they'd rotate every play, and they didn't have headsets, they didn't have anything. And that's how I grew up. That's how. The value of the player, like Mark Asino, came right up. I, I was in uh, the fourth row of box seat 164 that we had, and he came running around, and he gave me high fives to everybody. You can't write that in a book. You know, Joe Clicker, the same thing. Um, and then Richard Todd playing with a busted grip, and they scored, and they won. So when I have value of that in my mind, and you guys are all thinking about who's going to go where, or how's it going to go. And I told you, I, I, tr I trust Joe, I, I trust, you know, Joe, um, I, I just trust the staff. And we'll get there. And I think we'll win this year. And I keep a positive mode on that. You know, I'm, go I'm going through my own battles. I just finished chemo at the hospital this morning. I said, man, it's 10 o'clock. I need to get on the Jake Ashman show. I appreciate it. You. Listen, you've been a superior uplift when you know when things are down with other people or what have you and uh you know i value your show i told you i'd be become an uh, asthma page patient i'm just waiting for my bank card to get in the mail <laughs> <laughs> keith i'll tell you what uh, you message me off there all right and uh we'll get you we'll get you set up I, I got your first year of patreon on me my man i appreciate your support all right reach out to me shoot me an email i don't know if you're an email guy but just contact me have a family member DM me if if they know how to do that on Twitter or Instagram or just email me. It's asmanjake at Gmail, and we'll get you set up. All right, I'd be happy to to do that, Keith. Great call, Adi. I appreciate the support, my man. And hopefully, all's going well with your your chemo battle. They were all thinking of you. I appreciate that, man. Prayers up to Keith. That's awesome. That is awesome. Best fans, man. This fan base is the best. Unreal. Comments, questions, super chats. It's going to be tough to top that call, but the Gustbuster hotline is open. 
Uh, let's see. People saying Keith is a legend in the chat. King Lowski's calling Keith a legend. That's when you know, Keith, you're a legend. Love that. Andres with a super chat. Gary's the goat. We need a full co-host with Gary. What, is Gary paying you $2 to say this? I don't even think Gary wants a full show of Gary. How cool is this? Mr. J. Biz, who we talked about yesterday, is going through a cancer fight as well, just wrote in, salute to Keith, my chemo brother. Love that. Prayers to both of you guys. Shout out to you, J. Biz. Super chat coming in. Cool hand one nine six oh sound the alarm, baby. Yeah. Jake, here's to you, one of the hardest workers on new content on our team. Shout of hen dog. You ask and you shall receive, cool hand. It might be 1041 in the morning, but it's five o'clock somewhere on Friday, and the Knicks have Jalen Brunson. The Islanders are on the cusp of the playoffs. The Yankees have the best record in baseball, and the New York Jets are going to be Super Bowl champions. Oh, yeah. Um, Gonzo checks in. Drafting a tackle on the draft fixes Joe D's Jets. Pillars and 30 weight ball bearings fixes Mr. Stanwick's jet. I have no idea what this means. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, let's see. Wow, look who's called in. Who knows where he is this time? An international man of mystery. Craig is up next on the Gutsbuster Hotline. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, Craig. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm, I barely even know where I am. I definitely don't know which time zone I'm in, but I can tell you I am in the Middle East at this point. So it's uh, it's it's the month of Ramadan, especially what was apparently we're not allowed to eat like in public or something. So I don't even know if I'm going to get some food. I'll, I'll find out. What do they shortly. what do they have where you're at food wise? Where, where in the Middle East are you? Oh, I'm in in Doha in Qatar, which is somewhere in the United Arab Emirates, if that helps. Uh, okay. I, I, I probably couldn't put point to it on a map either. Uh, but I'm I'm here. They did have a World Cup though, so Qatar did. Get no, they that. did. I don't know how. When you look out the window, it's unbelievable. It's just the desert, and they build all this stuff. Uh, it's actually pretty pretty amazing what what they do. Uh, but Qatar Airlines, beautiful. Just cannot cannot recommend it more highly. But I've rolled up in the business lounge. I'm going to see if there's some Hennessy here because I just saw a moment ago that you've got it. I've escaped from the beer of Czech Republic. I don't know if I can drink beer ever again. I've OD'd on beer, but that's okay. So I'm going to find some Hennessy and have a shot for you, mate. I love and, it, um, Just quick one to Keith, mate. You are the legend of legends. I hope you get better, my friend. Keep calling in. Keep in touch uh, with your with your Jets family. We love you. And, uh, you know, whatever's happening, mate, we hope, you, we hope you get better. And if you're in the New York area, I expect a message so I can have coffee with you. In a couple of weeks, uh, I'm not going to get any it. anything done. I've got so many people to see at this point. I get messages left and right, and uh, I think my wife's like, "Are we going to do anything for ourselves?" I, go, no, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. It's going it's to pretty much all Jets friends at this point. So it's going to be brilliant, man. I'm almost there. I've got three hours take off for Adelaide, South Australia. Nice thirteen and a half hour uh, uh, trip, and uh, I'll uh, yeah, that that Hennessy is going to get me there. Don't worry. I love it, Craig. Appreciate the call, man. Thanks for the kind words for uh, Keith as well. Very nice of you. Craig's the best, man. I mean, we have the best callers, best audience, best community. People are just spending money to gift memberships to other people. It's unbelievable. Papa Bear knows best, says, Jake, if we go 7-10 and 10 again, is it really JD's fault? And should he be fired with Sawa? I mean, if they go 7-10 and 10 again, like, uh, did Aaron Rodgers get hurt? Like, how are they going 7-10? and 10? They've won seven games the last two years with no quarterback. I would say if they win seven games again and miss the playoffs, everyone's got to go. I, I mean, I, is it really JD's fault? It probably would be. They can't go seven and ten. I don't, I don't care what happens. I, I'm sick of it, man. They got to win this year. I'm tired of it. If they go seven and ten, everyone's gone. We're starting over. New regime. How many chances do you get? Joe Douglas is in year six. It's his fifth full year with a draft and free agency. 
He has hired this head coach who is now in his fourth year. If they don't win, they're both gone. It shouldn't be one or the other. Unless there's like extenuating circumstances that I need to see it play out this year. Seven and 10 is not good enough. Everyone's got to go if that happens. Everybody. And that's how it should be. Today's Jake Asma show is presented by Huga House. Folks, get your vintage inspired hat. 15% off the hat that Aaron Rodgers is always wearing. When you go to HugaHouse.com and use promo code Asman at checkout. And what I love about Huga House is right now they got a deal going where if you buy one hat with my code, you'll actually get the second hat 30% off. So you can get two hats extremely discounted over at Huga House. So check it out. These are the in hats right now. If you're into fashion, into style, I wouldn't know, but I'm just glad Huga House wants to associate with me. They also are being currently rocked by my favorite comedian going, the great Shane Gillis. So check it out, HugaHouse.com. Promo code ASMIN at checkout for 15% off. Buy one hat, 15% off. You'll get a second hat, 30% off with that promo code ASMIN. So shout out to everyone who's purchased a hat. Shout out to Huga House for being a part of today's program. FPP says, Jake, you have the best Jets YouTube channel, better than any Packers YouTube channel. I appreciate that, FPP. I'm glad you got a membership, man. We welcome all fans here besides Dolphins fans, Patriots fans, and Bills fans. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why he's the king. King Mother Effin Loski. Yeah, say, sound the alarms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following 10 listeners just became as maniacs. Top Cat Warless, Jordan Griffin, Brandon L., Will Cedar, John Thomas. Derek Blaney, Ohio Jet, Gary Weber, Aria Shikon, Hector Cabrera. Ten as Maniac memberships. We have gained 30 members during today's show. Unbelievable. I got emojis to add this weekend, folks. I need your help. Asmin Jake at Gmail. Image aspect one by one. We need a Henny emoji. We need <laughs> someone suggested a Gary Cornroll emoji. I, I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. So many emojis to contemplate to add, but we will be adding at least two now this weekend because we have hit the threshold. Unreal. Unreal. Shout out to everyone out there. And if you missed it earlier, folks, Ricky NY finally got himself a membership. <laughs> it took a while, but he got it. Uh, GTA says this show is the best callers, genuinely great people. Oh, the best. And they're from all over the world. I can't even say the country. Also, Gonzo made a Fletch reference earlier. I want to clarify. It went right over my head, but I'm glad someone got it. I love everyone thanking Lowski for their membership. Make sure, uh, you thank whoever gives you a a membership in the chat. Tom, how come Tom doesn't have a membership? Tom's always in here. Need a Mike Breen sound drop saying bang for membership drops. You know what's so funny? In my notes right here, I was just thinking the same thing. You see this? I literally wrote down during the show as a reminder to myself, bang sounder. I was thinking the same exact thing. Bang sounder. So great minds think, as my old co-host Brad Kellner would say. Yes, we will have a Mike Breen bang. I love it. I might need to get, you know, I work with Michael K. I might need to get a Michael K. See ya when we send morons to Stupid Town or the Shadow Realm. Hey, Gator, put that in the next video you do. Love that. Dave writes in Jake's channel is the best. And I are you fans, number one, barring some idiots. I think that's a compliment. Jimbo says, Jake, what about a bing bong for money slash super town entry? Oh, that's a good one too. Joey says, Jake missed the start of the show. What was Mel Kuyper's take on the Jets draft? You know, there's this thing called the rewind button, Joey. You should try it out. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. I played the full clip, so go back and rewatch it.
Jenergy says, Jake Verizon owes you at least a month of free Wi-Fi. You bet your ass they do. Thank God Fialco co-hosted yesterday when the internet went down. State of the art just became an Asmaniac. Doing it the old-fashioned way, baby. Yeah. Dan writes in, random thought. What do you think Charles and V-Man's Tinder profiles say? Charles definitely says, if you go out with me, I'll share with you the best chicken soup recipe ever. And V-Man's definitely says, swipe right to learn about the history of Puerto Rico. Those are the first thoughts that came to my mind. Kay says, let's get Jake to 40,000 subs. Hey, we're getting there. One, you know, one day at a time. We're, we are at now 36,921. So we are in range of getting to 37,000 by the end of the weekend. But I can't do it without your guys' help. GTA says, V-Man's bio just says sleeping. <laughs> Maybe it does. I don't know. You think V-Man's profession is musician on his bio or historian? That'd be the question I would have for V-Man. Does he put historian as his occupation? Does he put lead singer in whatever the name of the band is? I don't know, man. V-Man is one of the great artists of this generation, though, that we know. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Bass, Bass, and Jake. Get it started, Gator. Bass, Bass, and Jake. Bass, Bass, and Jake. Bass, Bass, and Jake. Bass, Bass, and Jake. Well, so just always cut the line. And the boy Lo dance is really fine. When she's still talking about them jets. My seniority, you know she gets real happy. Real happy if that the female buttons are run. Hey, Gator, it's a family show. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Bass, bass, and Jake. Bass, bass, and Jake. Bass, bass, and Jake. Bass, bass, and Jake. I mean, one of the great songwriters and performers of our generation. The great me band. Ladies and gentlemen, FPP is paying it forward. This man is a Packer fan. He watches us every day because he says the Packers don't have good YouTube channels, but this channel does. So FPP, we say thank you and we sound the alarms because guess what? The following five members. Just became channel members. Five listeners just became as maniacs. Here we go. Courtesy of FPP, which we don't know what it stands for. It it has to be provocative. M. Valletta, Chris2485, Brandon Ace, Justin79, J. Sid. Congratulations. You just became channel members. Folks, we're making it rain this morning. We got stacks of just copious amounts of cash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. All right, members for you, for me, for everybody. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Uh, let's see. Craig writes in Charles Bio, meet me and my mom. That could be it. I don't put it past Charles. We know, we know we know Charles has a way with words. He's an old soul. That we know. Uh, let's see. Sean says Sala has no excuses this season. It's put up or shut up. I agree. I mean, I, I, how could anyone think otherwise? Like they they know that. You don't get four losing seasons and come back for a fifth year. You got to win. I mean, you know what they say. When you lose, you're a loser, right, Bob? When you lose, you're a loser. I suck. Joe D sucks. We all suck. Until you win, you do. Until you win, you do. Um... Gary writes in, I'd be good with taking Bowers at 10. I'd be good with just sending you to Stupid Town. All right, we get it. You love Bowers. 
Just shut the f up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass, so shut the f up. Dave says, is Charles still chopping his food? Uh, I don't know. I mean, things got a little contentious yesterday, Dave. You know? Charles is a good man, but Ye yesterday's call had a lot to be desired. It left a lot to be desired, I should say. Charles Gorman is up next. Hello, Charles. Hey, Jake. How's it going? What's up, Charles? A little rude to be eating on the air, Charles. Charles. What are you eating, Charles? What are we munching on today? Can you hear me? Are you deaf? Charles, you're on the air. Bro, you're on the air. We are doing a national show. Millions are tuned in, Charles. Um, Hello? Um, hey, Charles, wake up. Hey, Charles, I need um, some Charles. I need some Dude. This is, I'm just going to let you chill, all right? Your show now, Charles. Go ahead. Yep. No, no, no. I'm Charles Gorman, everybody. No, no, no. I'm just eating. I'm just chewing. Uh. Yep. Okay. Should we move on or just let Charles on the screen just eat here? Um. Yes, go. You're on the air. Um. Yes. What? Um. Oh my God! Stop eating! Oh my God! What are you doing? Uh, goodbye. I can't. Oh brother, this guy stinks. We'll see you later, Charles. <laughs> I mean, it's just out of control. Why? Why did Charles call yesterday, man? Uh, let's see. Dan says, Gary's Tinder bio. Knockouts don't matter if you land it off chat. <laughs> That'd be a funny segment. Maybe we'll make that a Patreon only show. Jake Asman callers Tinder bios. What would they say? We, we, we know what Gary's would say, though, according to uh, Dan here. Knockouts don't matter. Knockouts don't matter if you land enough jabs. <laughs> oh, man. Hawk says, people ask me why I don't call into the show. Because you're a coward, Hawk. Hawk, you owe 25 memberships. Otherwise, it, here, here's the thing, Hawk. If someone Venmo's me 1,000 and you haven't paid your 25 memberships up to the community, you're done. All right, so the longer you wait, the more of a chance I get that $1,000 Venmo that bans you. You you pay for 25 memberships in honor of every interception Zach Wilson's thrown as a Jet. You can't be banned until at least a regular season starts, and then all bets are off because you're going to drive me crazy with the first three and out saying fire or sour. So I'm just letting you know, there's a bounty on you for $1,000. That gets sent, you're done. All right. Lauren says, Jake, you got to start a Zach Wilson swear jar for Hawk every time he mentions him five memberships. <laughs> I want to make this very clear. Hawk is on borrowed time right now. See, Hawk, no, Hawk and I agree here. He goes, Jake ain't lying about the fire salad thing. He knows me too well. You're damn right I do, Hawk. Alan says, how much is 25 memberships? I want to cover it for Hawk. Alan, as much as I would probably accept your blood money, because New York ain't cheap, Hawk's got to pay for it himself. You don't, Hawk doesn't get to have rich friends that bail him out, all right? 
Hawk doesn't get a fall guy. You can't be his fall guy. Don't save his ass, Alan. We're making Hawk learn for his transgressions. Jimbo says, Jake, would you take four separate payments of 1K or some denominations of that way? Hope you get what I mean. <laughs> it's funny. Hawk's a made man because he, he he signed up for Patreon last time to avoid being banned for life. And I'm like, all right, fine. If you're going to pay five bucks a month, we'll keep you around. But I'm a capitalist. A thousand bucks is too tough to pass up. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Uh, let's see. We'll wrap up here in just a little bit. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Pittsburgh Mike says, April is off the rails month on the Jake Asman show. Let's be honest, though, Pittsburgh Mike. Is there ever really a, a couple shows in a row where one of them doesn't go completely off the rails? That's what makes this show so fun. It's about the Jets, but it's about so much more. It really is. Dan writes in, Hawks Tinder bio, just looking for my Zach Wilson. Aren't we all? Not. You know what I'm looking for? Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he's back? He's really good? Uh, I'm going to defend him because he's actually deserving of being defended? Yeah, I will. Matias says Latham's a smart pick. He doesn't have to play right away, which I like. I think that's good. He's got tremendous talent, and he doesn't have to play right away. So there's a lot to like there. Big fella says plans coming together. Trade down to get Fatano. If they did that, I'd be very happy on draft night, especially if they got a second in the trade down somehow. Alan says, Jake, you need an Isles Rags postgame show. You need to wear a Barzell jersey at MSG tomorrow. Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to the game yet, Alan. I got to see. Tickets are expensive. You know, I'll be watching. Jimbo says, didn't hear a note of four $250 payments or $10, $100, Jake. No, I, Jimbo, let's be honest here. I am a man who is a capitalist. Big fella checks in with a super chat. Hawk is better than Synth Punk, and he's still here. I think Synth Punk, he's making a new name. That's why every time I see him, I ban him. Someone paid a bounty. Wasn't it you that banned Synth Punk, big fella? Dan writes in, Jake's Tinder bio. I'll do whatever if you pay me enough. I'm a capitalist. Damn right. Actually, I believe I don't have, I, I, I'm not on Tinder, but on the dating app I am on, I think one of my prompt questions is, uh, like, you know I'm loyal, and then it's like dot, 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 because I'm a Jets fan or something like that. I think that's what it is. Joey says, would you lose it if Brock Bowers is the pick at 10? I wouldn't lose it. I don't love it. I want to make it. I would have lost it had they not solidified their O line in free agency and the trade market. But I, I mean, I, I look at it like this: if they take Bowers, he better be unbelievable right away. All right, he better be amazing. I don't want to hear it. No excuses. This guy better ball. All right, he better be Sam Laporta from day one. Folks, if you're just tuning in, we have signed a partnership deal with Fanatics. So we're going to be having some Jets draft gear that you guys are going to be able to get discounted courtesy of Fanatics on this channel when it's announced next week. But if you look right now at the bottom of the uh, video here, like right near the description, you could see a bunch of Fanatics gear that's pinned that's discounted. So check that out. Obviously, the Jets have a new logo coming, but some of the T-shirts are on sale for like half off. Really quality Jet stuff, Nike gear. So check that out, all from Fanatics. It's down below. So shout out to Fanatics for being a part of the ride here. Alan says, Jake and B-Man need to go on a double date, and it needs to be on camera. 
I mean, am I trying to scare the person I'm going on a date with? <laughs> I would, I, I, I would do a, uh, I would pitch a reality show where we we put V Man in New York City, and we just have a camera crew follow him a lot around on his adventures. Gary says, how much longer until Zach is a high school football coach? I mean, look, I don't think he's going to necessarily be on a NFL active 46 roster. I think he's probably a quarterback three somewhere. I said this the other day, and the more I think about it, the more I stand by it. It's more likely Zach Wilson never starts another game in the NFL than he starts another one, just so everyone knows. And we're not counting preseason. Like, think about the extenuating circumstances that it would now take for Zach to start again. Like, Geno Smith was always a number two when he went elsewhere. Sam Darnold's always a number two. That's not the case here with Zach. Zach's looking at being a QB3, most likely. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just gained another Patreon member. Shout out to Wrong Verb, who signed up during our show. Wrong Verb, welcome aboard. Our most recent Patreon subscribers also include Spin to Ben, Storm and Gorman, which might be Charles Gorman, but I haven't been able to confirm it yet, and Ron Meltzer, our four most recent Patreon subscribers. Uh, let's see. Sean says biggest bust in NFL history. He's not, but he's to me the biggest bust of any jet pick that has played that many games. Like Vernon Golston never got this many opportunities that Zach Wilson got. Like, think about it. Zach Wilson started for three years. Crazy. By the way, wrong verb. I just saw you signed up for the entire year as well. So thank you, man. Appreciate the commitment. Goes a long way, man. Really, really appreciate everyone on Patreon. Make sure you get in that Discord. Take advantage of your perks on Patreon. Don't just sign up and forget about it. Take advantage. Peter says Jets are trading down for real or for sure if they could find a trade partner. Jay Quest says smash the like button. It's free. Yeah, and you know what we like on this show? We like free stuff, especially stuff that's gifted by uh, members. Free stuff. Uh, Hawk says Becton a bigger bust. No, he's not. But Kai Becton played like a really good left tackle his first year. When has Zach Wilson ever played like a really good quarterback for more than a drive, maybe a half? He's never had one game where he's been great for four quarters. Big fella says bigger bust. Zach Wilson or Ryan Leaf? I think it's Leaf because Leaf threw away his career with bad decisions. He had like alcohol or drug problems, whatever it was. Zach just was bad, but it wasn't because he didn't try. It's not like he quit or didn't study or didn't work hard or shoved a reporter in the locker room like what Leaf did. D Watt says, be honest, Jake. Becton does have a bigger. No. How is Makai Becton a bigger bust than. And Zach Wilson. Mekhi Becton actually played well as a rookie. And then got hurt for two years. Zach Wilson was always bad. Like it, To me, it's not even close. If Zach Wilson's rookie year was as good as Mekhi Becton's rookie year, I think there'd be a lot of Jet fans that would still be on board with giving Zach another shot. I mean, come on. Zach writes in, Jets need the trade down if possible. Take an offensive tackle in round one, wide receiver round two if we get a trade. That's the path. You said it best, though, if they get a trade. If. 
It's hard. It's easier said than done. Hawk says Beckton is twice the size of Zach. So we're just talking about that Beckton has bigger man boobs than Zach. That's what we're talking about, Hawk. Original. Cartman says the most frustrating thing about Zach was just when you thought he played his last game as a Jet. He had that one game that you had to keep him around for a few more games. Yeah, Chiefs game, Texans game. It's so true. It's so true. They were gonna they were gonna move on from Zach if he didn't have the good game against the Chiefs. That's like been put out there by people. So there's something to that for sure. Green and White says, I lived through Blair Thomas, Vernon Golston, Darnold, Zach. Zach's the biggest bust. Look, Christian Hackenberg is a bigger bust from the standpoint that he never played. But like if you count guys that actually played. It's Zach Wilson. He, he played more than any big bust in Jet history. He, he started for three years. It was never good. Hawk says, Becton is twice as big, though. So we're talking bust per pound. And sure, we're arguing semantics. Goodbye, Hawk. Into the shadow realm you go. That's the problem with Aaron Rodgers. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Or here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the fuck up. I mean, Dave Chappelle might have been on to something there. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig writes in, found the Hennessy. Cheers, my man. Yes. Cheers to you, Craig. Shout out to Craig. He's in Qatar. I think that's Qatar. Q-A-R. <laughs> Money on the screen. Ten, ten dollars in Qatar bucks. I don't know what that equates to. I'm guessing that's like two dollars because it's the same color as this one from Big Fella, which was two dollars. Unreal. Jordan says drinking before noon. Love it. I mean, I'm working right now, man. I'm working hard. I don't have to buy another bottle of Henny this weekend, though. We we went through a lot those last week. Gary writes, and I think it's pronounced Cutter. Here's the thing, Gary. You're the last person I ever want telling the audience how to say something. The way you've mispronounced names. I mean, it's revolutionary. David is knowledgeable. He says 10 reals is $2.75. There we go. Craig goes, could be a million U.S. for all I know. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Craig, if that was a million dollars U.S., I'll pick up the I'll pick up dinner a month from now for everyone at the steak place. ISU says Ted Qatari Reality goes two dollars. All right, so there we go. It was two dollars and seventy five cents in Qatar money. Mo says, how's it been being back in New York? Oh, it's been awesome. Gary says, fair point, Jake. But am I really worse than Mad Dog Russo at pronouncing names? Nobody is worse at pronouncing names than Christopher Mad Dog Russo. Nobody. So that is definitely true, Gary. The pride of Syosset, Long Island, baby. Christopher Mad Dog Russo. Um... Craig says, when you're international, it's always drink o'clock. That's true. We know Craig said it. An incredible amount of uh, beers and 
copious amounts of now Henny shots. Nate says, I'm amazed how many ads I get now. Jake is taken off. I do recommend YouTube premium for those who are sick of YouTube ads. I know it's uh, like 15 bucks a month, but if you, if you're on YouTube religiously, like I think many of us are, you definitely want to uh, consider that. Mo says Isles haven't lost since you're back. That's right. They haven't lost since I'm back. The Yankees have the best record in baseball. The Knicks still have a chance of being the two seed, and they spanked the best team in the NBA last night after they spanked around Giannis and the Bucks the other night. Things are good right now. Tanella says Natalie Portman, also Sios, its finest, and Judd Apatow. We got quite the alumni list. Curtis Martin says, go Knicks. Love that. ISU writes in, Jake, can you do me a favor? Instead of paying for my year at Patreon for finishing second in the NCAA pool, will you take that money and buy $50 worth of channel memberships for other listeners? Wow, that is so nice of you, ISU. If that's what you want to do with your winnings, because you came in second place. I will definitely do that. But how about we do this, ISU? Who says, I'll gladly keep paying $5 per month for Patreon on my own. I appreciate that, ISU. Let's do something cool then. We'll we'll give away one of the days of our mega cast in Vegas. We'll, we'll do a $50 giveaway bomb. And we'll say it's sponsored by you for winning the Bracket Madness. Or coming in second in our Bracket Madness. We'll do that. We'll save that for draft night. That'll be awesome. We'll do that either night one or night two. You pick the day. You pick the night. That'll be great. That's what you want to do. That's awesome. Way to pay a floor, man. That's so cool. That's awesome. Um... Big fella, Natalie Portman is not her real name. Yeah, it's a stage name. Her last name is Hirschlag. I know this because I saw like a 2001 Sayasi yearbook once and it said Natalie Hirschlag. I was like, huh. Peter says, Knicks get no respect. They don't, but that's what feeds them. I mean, keep downing the Knicks, man. They, now that they got OG back, they could they they could beat anyone, even without Randall. They still got a chance to do damage. Peter says, "Do you think Lazard will be good enough?" No, he shouldn't. They need another receiver. ISU says that works for me. All right, confirmed. Fifty memberships will be gifted courtesy of ISU during the draft. Or $50. So I got to do math. I'm bad at math. I think that'd be 25 memberships. No. What would it be? We have $50 to give away in memberships. That would be 10 memberships. I think that'd be 10 memberships. But I'm bad at math. I'll gift it another five. So we'll get it up to 15 ISU from you. Because what you're doing is awesome. That's an awesome gesture. So 15 memberships will be gifted because of ISU. Yeah, 10. I've, I've had some hennies, guys. I'm getting killed in the comments here. 10, bro. <laughs> Unreal. All right, last chance to get it here. Going to wrap up shortly. Show number one of the day. We got a big guest joining us this afternoon. My buddy Tyson Rouch from Let's, Let's Talk Jets will be on at 3.30 Eastern. Dan says it's like 10 yards shy of a thousand rushing for Brees, not letting Brunson get 40. Yeah, but they were they were dominating them last night. Dan, I mean, I, I don't need Brunson getting hurt in a game that means nothing. Big picture. Once the game's out of reach. Uh, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, our final caller was our first ever caller. 
VR up next on the Gus Buster Hotline. What's up, VR? Yo, Jake, what's going on? Whoa! Yo, I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be the first show to show you the Jets tattoo is healed and ready to go. It's ready for flight. It's ready for takeoff. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Let's go! Boom! Let's go! Yeah! Look at that tattoo. That looks awesome, man. That that. That is fire, bro. That is sick. I tagged Woody on it. And I was like, hopefully, is this gonna be the the uh reveal for the uh for the unis uh this upcoming season? So hopefully he responds to that and he gives me a a, a, a thumbs up, a plus or whatever. But uh happy Friday, bro. Happy Friday to everybody in the chat, happy Friday to all the Asmaniacs. Let's go, bing bong Knicks. We got another <laughs> win. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Rangers. <laughs> uh, I, VR, did, 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 like, how long did that take to get, like, actually implemented? Like, what, like, were you in pain during it? Walk us through the process there. <laughs> so, um, the, the design, I came up with the design a little while ago, and I just basically, you know, told my tattooer, I was like, I want to get this done. I want to get this done before, you know, the season started. And, he just drew something up for me. And um, once he, once I got it to a point where I said, okay, you know, the dimensions between the, the logo and the, the, uh, the plane were where I liked it. He just was like, all right, let's do it. It took about uh, two and a half, three hours to do. Um, and, um, you know, I wanted to use my skin as the negative space. And uh, he's the one that came up with the airplane, and and it just uh, it just came together. And he's a he's a great tattooer. If anybody's in Daytona Beach, uh, Main Street Tattoos is uh, the guy's name is Mike Magner. He's an excellent tattooer. You know, I know a lot of people come to Florida, a lot of people come to Daytona. So he he's the dude, he's the man. But that's that's uh you know, that's his work and just kind of like my idea for, I wanted the old Jets logo for a long time. And this just kind of, uh, you know, came all together all the, you know, at the, at the right time. So, yeah. That is awesome, man. I mean, everyone hit the like button. If you like the VR tattoo of champions there. So that pain wise, what wasn't too bad. I mean, three hours doesn't sound terrible. No, no. I mean, like it, it's not too bad. I mean, like, you know, like having the Jets caused you enough pain, VR? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jets have caused me a way more pain than this tattoo ever will. Um, but you know, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that painful. You know, at certain points, it hits up against the bone. But other than that, it's you know, it, it's exactly where I wanted it. I was, I was ready for it. I was ready for you know, in my mind, I just said, you know, this is this has to happen, and um, it's for life, baby. It's for life. <laughs> I love it. How about this? Uh, Richard from Jersey's watching. He goes, yo, Jake, this is mine. You can see in his uh, profile icon, he's got a similar style tattoo. Yes, sir. Got. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see that, Rich. Yo, that's awesome. Love that. Dude, that's awesome. Man. Well, I know I know you're pumped about the big jersey reveal then. It's going to be, you're going to be able to match, match the tattoo with the outfits now going forward. Exactly. Exactly. So anytime I take a picture with the uni, I'm going to be like this, yo, like, what's up? <laughs> I can't wait. I won't get a real tattoo, but I want a matching one, and we'll get a photo together. I, I, yeah. I I'm too big of a wuss. I can't let the Jets cause more pain to me, VR. I can't. I, I wouldn't be able to do it, man. I give you so much credit. But I want a photo where we're both going like Start this. small. Start small. Do yeah. like a little bunny rabbit, or you know, <laughs> a heart or something like that. Start small. If they win a Super Bowl, I'm open to it. I'll put it out there. I'm at least open oh, to it. Dad so will kill me, but I'm open if to you it. You notice, like on the top of the top and the bottom, I left space. So if they win a Super Bowl, you know that's going on there too. I mean, I, I love it. Space. I'm thinking about doing a city behind here and doing some. I mean, just some incredible stuff. So this is just the beginning. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna grow. It's gonna get a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Well, you, you have a great weekend flashing that tattoo everywhere, right? Yes, yes, sir. You too, man. Have a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, great. I'm not calling this out. There we go. There we go. We'll be back. We'll, we'll, we'll do a show tomorrow at some point, probably Sunday as well. We got too much going on. Unreal. Jaden says. Definitely getting a Jets tat if we win. Big fella who's got a bunch of tats says, I have space planned out for the Jets winning the Super Bowl. That's funny. 
That's why I can't even imagine a jet tattoo if they win the Super Bowl. That's crazy. Uh, Alan Schefter says, Mark Pope, new head coach at Kentucky. Alan, your ability just to write things that already happened. And it's not even about football. Who cares about college basketball right now? I, I mean, uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh. Joey says, Jake, do you think JD will trade back to the first round, take one of the top six QBs? I do not. I I don't think they go quarterback in the first round. Hawk says, LOL, I care, Alan. It's amazing. You know, you you know what's happening here. Hawk, Alan, Gary, Asmin Nemesis Club. They meet every like Tuesday night. It's hilarious. You guys inviting Jets forever this week? Is he the keynote speaker? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, Boop Down says, Jake, breaking news. Gabe Davis signed with the Jaguars. It's funny. Hey, uh, breaking news. The, J- the Jets just signed Tyron Smith, I heard, too. Uh, breaking news, the, the Jets won Super Bowl three with Joe Namath at quarterback. I don't know if people know that. Uh, on that note, we'll end it right there. Thanks to everyone. We gained 36 channel memberships during this show. Bunch of super chats. The support is off the charts. We're under two weeks now from the NFL draft. In fact, two weeks from right now, we, are, we will already have known what the Jets decided to do with the number 10 pick. Did they trade up? Did they trade back? Did they trade back into the first round? Was Joe Douglas swinging his third leg around, as Mr. Bonesy would say? Nobody knows. But three weeks from right now, or three weeks, but less than two weeks from right now, we will know. Yeah, baby. And we will be live in Vegas for the entire draft, all three days of it. Thanks again to everyone who watched. Tyson Routes, 3.30 Eastern. Yesterday, I ended the show, and they signed Ashton Davis, so we needed to do a third show yesterday. If that happens again today with someone else, I'll be live as quickly as possible. On that note, enjoy the rest of your Friday. I'll be back at 3.30 Eastern with Tyson. Happy, happy weekend to all, and I will talk to you guys soon. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Three NFL draft, the New York J E T S. Jets, Come Jets, on! Jets. Select Will McDonald, linebacker, what? Iowa State. What the Let's fuck? Go. I can't believe this shit. All what right. the fuck? You want me to do that? Hell, And Jet. And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach.